Welcome to MoPlay, uh, example interactive market dynamics simulation. You can see here the description of this uh, simulation. Uh, and if I type enter, it will start it up. You will see first we will have a sort of command window that's run in the background. And then quite quickly, we move over to uh, the graphics uh, window. I needed to do something manual because the way I record the screen, but you shouldn't do anything. It just just, just pop up with this screen that you're just seeing right now. And you can see I can move my mouse. Here on the right, you have a certain outputs that are provided by uh, um, the starting up of the system. We will not go into detail right now. I will hide this with this blue arrow here. You can see. On the left similar, I could hide this, but I actually want to show you something, so I unhide it again. So here you can see the simulation running. <clears throat> so just for purposes of illustration, I switch the screen, which you should not usually do, that you can see there's actually here a market dynamic simulation running in the background. This is Gromax with a few options of interactive market dynamics that are activated. And you can see here it is happily running. We should produce 86 nanoseconds a day if we start running it right. That's just to show you, uh, you could uh, uh, manipulate that, but this is really more advanced. So let's stick to the basics. So what we see here is we really this simulation that is running, right, on li live on this laptop right now. And I can, of course, with the mouse, this is using either the right mouse button or the mouse wheel, I can zoom. And with the left mouse button, if I click, I can change the orientation of the scene. So let's look at it a bit closer. So we have different compounds in there. In the colored beads here is a short protein segment, a transmembrane domain. In white here, we have a membrane patch. Uh, the blue dots is water. Uh, and this uh, yellow one is an ion that I highlighted. So all what you have seen here, you also see it on the left here. For instance, the water, we have model water. That's the water in this model that's loaded and it's shown as points. These are the blue dots that are moving. And if I click on points, I hide the water, which might be nice to see all the other stuff. So you can see here from top again, the ion I mentioned and in green balls, one of the lipids highlighted just to see it better. And I move to this view again. We have now here uh, a side view and also some other ions going through. Now on the left, the top one here is the structure that has been loaded. It's called model because it was the name of the file that was loaded. So if I click on this down triangle here, you can see everything that's related to model was hidden. So that's basically all that is in the system here, right? If I click on this, uh, I here, everything will be hidden except the bounding box, which is basically the maximum minimum coordinates in the system. And I click again, it will be unhidden. And then for each of the representations here, it corresponds to a selection in the system. So all model basically is everything. So if I hide, well, there is no representation associated to it, so I cannot do anything right now with it. Model protein or nucleic, this is the colored balls here, and they are shown right now of hyperballs. If I click on the eye, it will hide the hyperballs or show back in. I can do that. Then we already saw the water. Again, I can hide them, unhide them. And I can also change the name. If I click on this triangle here. <coughs> Excuse me. You can see the selection name is model water. I can just change this to model water two, for instance, type enter. And then it has been re-added to the list of representations. Now it's at the end because I just modified it. And this is the actual selection is water. So here we typically use MD analysis selection language. And most of the features I implemented, not all. And that's it, I can make it smaller. And if I consider I actually do not need the water again at all, I can just kill the whole representation like that. And now, unfortunately, I cannot bring it back. Of course, I need to recreate it. 
Now, if we're on a representation, like here for the model the proteins, okay, I showed you the protein, uh, just uh, unrecognized atoms are actually the lipids because they have not been specified, and some of the ions, and then one lipid here, these are the green balls, and the ion is the yellow one. So you can find them all back again. If you wanted to add another representation, uh, you have this little plus here in front of the selection where you get a list of the representations that are available, which is not uh, today's topic, so I will not show that, but just for you to know it's there. Also be careful because things like surfaces take a long time to calculate, so you should never act activate them on the system uh, with a trajectory because then you will get difficulties actually getting the system to react. Okay. So, as I said, this is a running simulation, and actually, uh, let me hide that for now, uh, we can interact with it and not just turn the system, but I can, for instance, try to pull here on these atoms by just right-clicking on an atom, and then you can see there's a little spring that is um, shown, and with that, I can move it across. And basically, I tell the atom to go where the end of the spring is, and so if I want the force to be higher, I just pull it to the extreme of the system. So one trick can be to make this very small. And then I have even more pulling force. Right, okay, now I got a lipid, that's not what I wanted. Now, of course, so small, it's more difficult. I do this on the fly while I'm selecting. I can make this smaller and then really have a big force. There is another possibility that you can actually just tune the force. I will show that in another video, but you can also, from the command line from here, uh, mm -hmm. set it uh, explicitly to a value or to a multiplier. Okay. So what you can see nicely with a system like that is, for instance, you probably just saw that I tried to pull out the protein. It's coming, but it was not so easy to pull it out. Whereas, for instance, pulling out a lipid here should be really straightforward. It should just follow my cue. I make it slowly so you can follow it, but you can see the lipid just comes out like if it was butter. And if I leave it, if I haven't pulled it too much, it will actually try to get back into the membrane because it really likes to be with its friends, the other lipids, and not in the water compartment. Because, okay, I removed the water representations, but of course the atoms are still there. You know, I can bring them back in. If I add here a uh, uh, selection, I can, what can I do? For instance, I duplicate this one lipid selection now I got one of it too. And then I make this here water. And for the sake of clarity, call that water again. And now I just need to choose the selection. It's fine now. Now I need to add a representation for it. And that could, for instance, be again the points we had earlier. And now you have these points again in an ugly color. So if you click on the points, you get actually an additional menu where you can, for instance, change the color. I can go to some nice blue, whatever you want water to be like, uh, change the size of the points as well, make them very small or <laughs> extremely big. You get the idea. And you can always reset to the default uh, and there are some other options you may uh, follow that are maybe not so interesting, but possible. I mean, not so interesting yet. yet. Residue idea, if you want to distinguish different ions, uh, the different water molecules, or residue number, which in this case should be quite similar. I can remove that representation and try another one. I could also go for hyperboles. Should work as well. Now these spheres are more, these are more 3D spheres. 
again, I have the choice here over color and properties like that. Uh, the scale, I can make them shiny. Uh, okay, it's not really today's focus, but just to show you that everything is sort of controllable from here. So let me just hide them again. And uh, that's basically it. So I showed you that it's easy and let's try it again. We pull out a lipid from the bilayer. The other one we pulled earlier went back in. So I will pull this one a little further to see almost no contact. Yeah, no, it's really, really just tingling. And let's see whether that comes back or not. You can also do bad things. You can like take this iron and tell it, I really want you to go in the membrane, which it usually doesn't like. So we can try to get it in the membrane and then I re release it to see what happens and should pop out of the membrane at some point, more or less rapidly. It stays still in the head group region, but it doesn't want to stay further in. And you can see the lipid is right now struggling a bit more to eventually get back in the bilayer, but maybe not immediately. So let's again pull this iron if I can select it. Now that's the, the lipid right in the middle of the membrane, yeah, which it shouldn't like. But it might get stuck actually in a sort of not knowing whether it's better to go up or down. Let's follow it more closely. So I in the membrane. And I can, of course, play the same tricks as before. If I don't like this iron representation, I can tune its hyperbolts uh, uh, details here, make it very shiny, for instance. Not sure we will notice that so much. I actually have difficulties of seeing it. So I am where are you? Okay, it's made its way up to the top. Yeah, it, it is shiny. It's just because it's yellow, it's not so so visible. Okay, and I think that uh, should conclude this really first uh, demo on interactive market dynamics. If you're finished, you want to quit this. The easiest way is Control X, Control and X at the same time, and I should get back to the menu. Thank you for your attention. Mm -hmm.